Hey guys, this is VJ Dinikar. In this video, I want to address the question, is it legal to spank a child in California? So the general answer to that question is in fact, yes, it is legal to use corporal punishment or to spank your child if that punishment is both necessary and reasonable. Necessary means it's for a disciplinary purpose Reasonable means it's not excessive. However, as you can see, those two terms, reasonable and necessary, are pretty vague and they're very objective, meaning they can change depending on the societal norms that define those two terms. And so, for instance, 50 years ago, a police officer or a district attorney trying to determine whether the discipline was reasonable and necessary may well look at the case differently than today. So a worldwide perspective, 63 countries have actually entirely banned corporal punishment by parents or legal guardians. The United States, it is entirely legal in all states for parents or legal guardians to use corporal punishment, including, as I said, in California. A poll in 1993 indicated that 50% of American parents use corporal punishment, whereas in 2017, only 35% of American parents admitted using corporal punishment. Now, I think both of those numbers way underestimate the actual number of parents who ever actually use corporal punishment, but I think you can see that the trend in terms of use of corporal punishment is going down, and also the acceptability in terms of the societal norms is it's clearly not acceptable anymore as a general matter or less acceptable than it previously was. And so therefore, if you are encountering a question by a police officer, a CPS officer, a district attorney who's deciding if they're gonna file your case as to whether what you did against the child was corporal punishment or was it child abuse and was it reasonable and necessary I think this sort of changing mindset towards corporal punishment is certainly going to be important. Now, the actual law that defines the question or the line between legal and illegal conduct is California Penal Code Section 273D, which is cruel and inhuman physical punishment or otherwise known as child abuse. So that requires that a parent using discipline inflicts some sort of traumatic condition and that discipline was not reasonable and necessary. Okay, so meaning there is absolutely a total defense for that charge if when you were hitting your child, you were doing so in a reasonable and necessary fashion in terms of using corporal punishment. Now, in California schools, public schools, it is entirely illegal to use corporal punishment pursuant to California Education Code 49001. Other states, I think there's 19 other states that actually allow the use of corporal punishment in schools. What if you're a foster parent? Can you use corporal punishment against a child? No, you can't. Pursuant to California Health and Safety Code 1531.5, Corporal punishment is banned if you're a foster parent. So what about the use of objects? So can you use, for instance, a paddle? Can you use a wooden spoon or something like that? The answer is the law in California does not distinguish between the use of objects or the use of your hand, for instance. It simply goes back to the question, is it necessary? Is it reasonable? In fact, in 1997, the California Attorney General issued a legal advisory opinion saying that, in fact, yes, the use of objects, so long as it's for a disciplinary purpose and so long as it's not excessive and it's reasonable and necessary, then the use of object is not per se illegal. Now, in fact, when someone is potentially using an object to spank their child, both the police, CPS, uh, family courts and mandatory reporters, including teachers, are going to think that that kind of conduct is much less acceptable and more likely to charge that conduct, regardless of what the actual law says. And so that gets us to the second question.
question, which, which is even if it's technically legal to use corporal punishment against a child, is it really legally advisable ever? And I think the answer to that question is no, because I think what you're doing when you are potentially going to be using corporal punishment is you're, first of all, risking an arrest. And the reason is that in California, as well as every other state in the country, there are many mandatory reporters of alleged child abuse. And those can include guidance counselors, teachers, nurses, doctors, clergy, and other professionals who are required, if they have a belief that there has been child abuse, to report that to the police. And in fact, if they don't, that is actually a misdemeanor. If they don't, they are actually potentially risking a professional license and not reporting that. So for instance, take a teacher, in terms of the incentives that they legally face, if they think that there's any basis whatsoever that child abuse occurred among a child that is one of their students, the incentive is, okay, I risk not reporting and facing a misdemeanor or reporting and facing absolutely no liability whatsoever and having essentially done what I've been trained to do. However, they're not really trained or know the distinction in law that I was talking about being it necessary and reasonable in terms of physical uh, corporal punishment that's legal versus illegal conduct. What they're trained to do is, if you think there's any potential child abuse, you report it. So when someone is reported by a teacher or a nurse, what happens is the child, let's say a teacher. So your child reports or doesn't report to a teacher, simply is overheard by a teacher talking to another student. This happens all the time. I've had many cases like this. Children are talking, teacher hears, teacher reports that to the principal, the principal calls the police, the police call into the office the child who is interviewed without the parents there, CPS is then called by the police, there the child is interviewed, and CPS interviews the parent, and the police interview the parent. So it's at that point that you are absolutely risking being arrested uh, simply potentially because you use corporal punishment and your child was overheard by a teacher saying that that occurred. In that instance, if you're ever questioned by the police, you should absolutely invoke your right to remain silent and not say anything. Because at that point, if the police ask you the question, okay, have you ever spanked your child? If you answer that question, you're really foreclosing defenses you're already halfway to admitting to committing a crime. Again, now your only potential defense, once you talk to the police and say that, yes, I've used corporal punishment, is that the punishment was reasonable and necessary. So beyond an arrest that you're risking, you are risking what I just referred to is a encounter with CPS. So CPS is Child Protective Services. They're gonna be called in by the schools by the police, by healthcare providers, when, whenever there's any allegation of child abuse. They're gonna interview you, there is gonna be a file created, and if they find, and this is not beyond a reasonable doubt like it is in criminal court, but if they find that you've committed an act of child abuse, you will be put into the Child Abuse Central Index, which is actually an index of persons who have been found by CPS to have, to have engaged in child abuse, and that index can prevent you from getting certain kinds of jobs. That CPS report additionally, even if there wasn't a finding of child abuse, is essentially gonna remain in your file where that can affect you in family court cases. So the other area where you are absolutely risking something legally is in family court. So very constantly, and I do a lot of family court cases where this happens, Two parents are involved in a family court case of divorce, and there is one or more children involved, and there is a dispute over custody, and the best interest of the children is the basic guiding principle the court has in terms of how much visitation and custody to give to each parent, and the question of discipline, including corporal punishment and child abuse, is absolutely an issue that is constantly confronting the family court. And so, yes, it's technically legal to use corporal punishment, 
but the family court is not a criminal court, number one. Number two, they're also going to be frowning upon the use of corporal punishment. And the other parent in a highly uh, litigious family court case is going to be making all kinds of allegations. Some of those allegations would be absolutely false of child abuse, okay? And if you have previously had an encounter, for instance, with CPS, where you, and let's say you were cleared by CPS, but you said you used corporal punishment, that record can come into evidence in the family court case where there's a custody dispute. It can also come into uh, the picture in family court cases in domestic violence restraining orders. So one parent, without any notice at all to the other parent, seeks a restraining order against that parent and seeks full custody, claiming that there's some prior child abuse. Now, if, again, there's any prior evidence whatsoever that you use corporal punishment, that's going to give a lot of fuel to that claim in family court. Whether that claim ultimately is true or not, the court is in a position in terms of incentives of, in the best interest of the child, being very cautious about any allegation of child abuse. And even when it's a borderline case of legal corporal punishment, the court is ten, going to tend to side with the other parent. Finally, when you use corporal punishment, you really are, in general, setting yourself up for a false accusation later on. So, for instance, let's take a case where, let's say in 2020, a 10 year olds in class talking to another student about how his father or mother hit him. The teacher overhears this. They report that to the principal. The principal calls in uh, the police. The police call in CPS. And now there is a CPS investigation. There's a police investigation. Let's say, though, that you're not arrested. OK, and then the case is transferred to the district attorney, the police report, and they don't file any charges. And let's say the CPS does their investigation. They don't substantiate that there was any abuse at all. Okay, so in a sense, that case is closed, although there is a police report and there is a CPS report. Then let's say in 2020, now your child is 12 and you guys don't have a good relationship. And because you didn't allow that child to, for instance, use their cell phone or something, they get very upset with you and they call the police and say, my mother or dad hit me. Okay, well now when the police come, they now have a record of a prior encounter alleging child abuse, which didn't lead anywhere, but certainly there is a record of that. Similarly with CPS, where again, there's a record, and let's say in the first case in 2020, you said, yes, I did spank my child, but it was done for this purpose, meaning it was necessary, it was a disciplinary purpose. It was a minor slap on the butt, and so it was certainly not excessive. Well, the incentive and the likelihood that CPS is going to think that the second accusation is true and substantiated is much higher given your past admission of engaging in corporal punishment in 2020. Same thing with the district attorney, same thing with the police. It's more likely the police in 2022, after the first case, during the second encounter, that they'll make an arrest. Same thing with the district attorney. They're more likely to file that case. So I think we've addressed both the question of whether it's legal to spank your child in California, but the more important question, whether it's ever legally advisable. Take care and have a good day.